So there are, of course, other incumbent businesses that are starting on this journey. They're not as far along as some of the examples I showed you before, but these are companies that I've been looking at and tracking over the last um, couple of years. And I'll just pick out a couple of examples. If we start over here, there's a lot of activity in the industrial internet of things. And, you, and it's well worth looking at what GE is doing with Predix and Siemens is doing quite a lot of work here. Uh, we've talked about industrial uh, agricultural platforms and so on. Quite interesting of note in the financial sector, Deutsche Bank, under a lot of pressure, very low return on equity at the moment, but they have said recently they want to become a platform business, they want to go beyond banking. It's a bold move for them. Over here, we have um, companies that are, have created developer ecosystems, connecting sensors into their products, allowing other people to create applications to support a closer relationship with the end user. And there are quite a lot of activity that's been going on in the media world as well. Shipstead is a great example of a company that's made a dramatic shift. Um, but interestingly, um, you think that digital and software companies might be advanced. It's only quite recently that SAP has decided that it needs to open up as well and be much more of a proper open platform uh, for a wider group of customers and partners. And I'm going to introduce you to SoftBank. SoftBank's one of my favourite case studies. We're going to look at them in the next module, so just look out for them. But having said all of this, there is still fundamentally huge and massive underinvestment and caution within the incumbent world today. And this is because I think that leaders don't fully understand the types of business models we've talked about, and nor do their investors, nor do their stakeholders as well. So if we look at traditional portfolios, business model portfolios of industries that I've looked at recently, let's take financial services, automotive manufacturing and telco, what you'll still see is that the vast majority of their investment and their attention and their focus is on traditional business models. So the green is the technology investments and the light blue, which you can barely see here, is on creating platforms very little real commitment to it in financial services. This is an aggregate of most banks around the world. In automotive, of course, because they're building physical products, but even though they say they want to move into a much bigger market of transportational services, most of the investment is still on physical things. And the problem with that is that it's gonna cost more and more money to build complex cars in the future. Take telco as well. Telco has been an industry that's always talked about new things, but it hasn't really put its money where its mouth is. It's still investing mainly in physical assets. Compare that to the digital masters. But what I want to point out here is that these companies are not pure play platforms. If you remember, we talked about them starting off as companies that exploited physical assets and physical capital. But the key thing is look at how much they have invested now in not only technology, but platform business models. They've invested time, money, resources, and management attention, and also invested a lot of emotional capital in engaging their shareholders as well. So they still operate, these companies still operate and leverage and spend a lot of money on physical assets, but they've complemented that with the new advanced digital business models that has helped them to grow so fast. And there are now a new set of mavericks, we've talked about some of them already today, who have dramatically changed where they invest their attention and their money. NASPAs we looked at, Ping An, and I'm gonna talk about SoftBank, a Japanese company in the next module. And if you remember back to the key lessons I asked you to look out for at the beginning of this module, these are the 10 things I hope and I think have been demonstrated in some of those case studies. I'll pick out a couple of interesting ones from my perspective here. If you are thinking of creating a platform, the most successful platforms today are ones that have combined content, if you remember about hows with their, the pictures that they allow people to share, community, I think most of the case studies demonstrated that, a new type of community amongst multiple stakeholders, and commerce, being able to transact and trade. That combination is where marketplaces are going today. And if you're designing something, you need to make sure you have those three elements in place to make it fully defensible. And the other thing I'd like to point out here is this, cannibalize. Are you willing to cannibalize 
and collaborate. So we heard from Fanak Dati how they very carefully designed and thought about what third party products they wanted to attract in their marketplace that wouldn't cannibalize too much to start with. And we saw lots of examples of collaboration, one of the biggest being Amazon collaborating with JP Morgan and with Berkshire Hathaway. Opportunities maybe for you to collaborate with either small platforms or some of your competitors or maybe some other third parties. We talked about the investment in the relational capital, which delivers that big boost to your value and that you offer your customers and the value you can create for yourself. And finally, I keep reiterating this diagram, it's very important. The digital platform is about supporting your existing business, but also allowing you to take on board this more open, more expansive platform model and create a full ecosystem around you, creating new potential for exponential growth. So thank you for your time for this module. As ever, there's more material you can access from the website. We do do the online trade, the on-site trading, I should say, if you want us to come and visit. Uh, please do email me if you've got any ideas or thoughts or questions from this module. The next two modules are these. The next one, we look at how you create a business model portfolio, how you allocate capital more efficiently. And then finally, we end up with the most important module, which is about the five steps you need to put in place to fully renew your business for a digital economy.